Warning, tuning your vehicle can be a dangerous activity and there is substantial risk involved. The dangers include, but are not limited to, permanently damaging your vehicle, injury or death to yourself or other people, damaging personal property due to paying attention to a laptop while driving. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Before altering the calibration of your vehicle, you should verify it is in proper working and mechanical condition. Have a working basis of knowledge of how your vehicle works and how the components interrelate and understand how your tuning software works. Bottom line, you and only you are responsible for making your own decisions as well as accepting the consequences of those decisions. I cannot be held accountable for your actions. All right, guys, welcome back. Hey, um, I'm working up the next series for this one, dealing with torque management. But on the way working through that, I realized I had kind of a brainwave dealing with some of the stuff that we talked about in the last one. And I wanted to, to touch on that real quickly. So I'm going to release an addendum to the time and pressure one. Um, and actually, this is going back to the very first part that I really talked about, which is that inertia factor profile stuff, that that one through nine or the zero through 16. Um, we were talking about kind of in the history. So I was looking at this more carefully, and I think I have a pretty good working idea of what is going on with this. Now, I've never heard anybody talk about this stuff um, I may be totally off base. So if you know different or know better or have any corrections, please, please chime in. I would love to learn from you if you have uh, any knowledge or input on this. Uh, my goal is to help the community. And so I just ask that you do the same. So we have three tables here <clears throat> that we're going to be exploring today. Well, maybe, you know, more than that, but the three main ones, at least for an example. So in the shift timing up shift tab, we have this initial. And if we look at this, the clue that HP Tuners gives us is the initial turbine acceleration to maximum turbine acceleration. And I believe in the video, the first one I did, I said, this is a quarter of a second, but I meant to say this is percent. And if we look at this 0.2 or 0.25, that is 0.2%. That's not 20%. So if we look at our, you know, what a coincidence here, this is 0.2 seconds, but 0.2% of 20 seconds is 0.4 milliseconds. Like this is not a lot of time. This is a very small amount of time, but this is going to be, whatever this number comes out to be, is going to be an adder to our total shift time. Next, we get to the final normal. And this is, the clue is, the, from maximum turbine acceleration to final turbine. So the first one was initial to max, and then this is max to final. And these are much larger numbers in here, but they are still percents. And even though they're larger numbers, again, if we use this as an example, uh, 1.3 milliseconds, not a lot of time. But again, this is a shift adder. Now, the real goofy one in here is this desired output torque factor, scalar, whatever, whatever it's called. Um, and this is interesting. So this is also an adder, but a negative number is obviously going to subtract. The interesting thing is, is like for me, number seven here starts out as zeros and then we start getting negative numbers. No units are listed, but I'm pretty sure this is actual seconds. So the other two are adding shift time and this one is removing shift time. So let's see how all of these things work together. So here are the tables. RPM and torque will determine our shift time and also determine what you know zone or what factor profile that we're going to use in here. And then these are the tables that contain the data for each one of those profiles. So as you can see, RPM and torque. So the next thing we're going to talk about after this video is... Uh, torque management. So the kind of this is an interesting transition, no pun intended, um, of of getting there. So let's look at this by example. So let's say we have a desired shift time of 0.26 seconds. That's going to be the number that we just put in there ad hoc to make it feel nice. And then we have the initial transition and final transition. 
let's just add in some dummy numbers to give us a nice round 0.3 seconds for our final shift time. Even though we just declared we want 0.26, final after the adders is going to be 0.3. So now we need to look at this output torque uh, factor thing. And again, seven is the interesting one. It starts out as zeros and then we start getting negative numbers. And if we look over here, this is shift completion. So this is 0%. We just started the shift, 10% through our shift, 30%, 40%, all the way down to one, which is 100%. So let's walk through this. Here we go, our, our initial shift, 0.3 seconds. We look at the inertia factor at 0% and it's zero. So we do nothing. So we're still, we need to wait 0.3 seconds. Then we look at 10%. And so now 10% of our time is gone. So we now are no longer waiting 0.3 seconds. We have 0.27 seconds remaining. Um, but we look down here to 10% row and it says, don't do anything, keep waiting. So this trend continues. Now we hit 50%. And so if we look in here, 50% is our first number. So half of our time is gone. 0.15 is half of 0.3. And it says subtract out 0 0.0498 seconds. Well, guess what? We still have a positive number here. So we still wait. Where things change, we keep doing that. And then we hit this 80% row. And by this time, 80% of our time has passed and we need to wait 0 0.06 seconds, but now we subtract out 0 0.0996 seconds and we come up with a negative number. And it says, guess what? Your shift is done. We do not, we do know, we do not have to wait uh, for this turbine to do whatever it's turbine thing that it is doing. We can break out and let's just drop that shift. So basically, all this inertia factor profile, this desired output is checking back every 10% or so. Like you can see, this isn't, you can see it like it skips 0.2 and it skips 0.7. So we'll just for now call it 10%. If we reach the bottom of this list and we're still at a positive number, then we're done with the shift and we're just going to exit out. But otherwise, if we keep subtracting and we get a negative number, we're good to go. So. What does this do? What is this modeling? So this is the same way that we characterize fuel injectors or we mathematically model transient fueling, which is how much fuel is puddling on the intake track and, you know, evaporating out or sticking to it. We're mathematically modeling and characterizing the turbine for our torque converter. That is to say how efficient it is or how much slippage is going on. So that first table, this initial acceleration is, hey, um, we started the shift. This turbine's going to do its turbine things. For an upshift, it's actually going to decelerate. You know, that's why the RPMs drop on your engine when you upshift. When you downshift, then it will accelerate positively. But either way, this is our initial. This is that table, at least for the one, two shift. That's the, the number. And then we reach maximum acceleration or deceleration. And then we have the final which is saying, hey, now this has got to slow down or speed up to its actual final RPM rate. So the only other oddball, that goofy table, is that desired output torque factor thing. This gives us a chance to break out early. So in those high-performance situations where we have a lot of RPMs and a lot of torque, and it's, it's making that turbine... Uh, move faster or slow down faster, right? So we have the ability to break out early and that's what this red line represents. So putting it all together, when we look at this, our torque converter has three parts, the impeller, which is connected directly to the engine, the stator, which does torque multiplication and other crazy fluid dynamical type things. And then we have the torque converter turbine. The turbine is connected one-to-one -one directly to the input shaft of the transmission. This orange, these two things represent uh, the clutch, right? You can see they're not touching. So this is disengaged. So, you know, off, off going clutch is disengaged and oncoming clutch is disengaged. The wheels differential output shaft, this is all just free spinning during the shift. And this part is free spinning as well. So we have torque reduction, doing torque reduction things to the um, crankshaft here, slowing down the engine. 
but this is still spinning and whatever fluid coupling is going on between the impeller stator and turbine this is doing whatever that fluid is telling it to do some converters are tight and they're going to respond a lot quickly and more uh you know efficiently i guess to say um, maybe that's a misuse of the word in terms of converter efficiency but some converters are going to be loose and that turbine may be a little bit lazy at least in some RPM or operating conditions. So really all that we're doing here is just characterizing this turbine because for the factory engineers, they want that smooth shift. So you don't want a huge differential between uh, this input shaft, which is you know kind of fluidly coupled to the engine, and then the output shaft that have vastly different speeds. We want to give enough time for this shaft speed to normalize and match. So kind of like rev matching, essentially. If we wait too long, the car speed will slow down um, and make a slow shift, and that's going to feel goofy. Um, but we need to wait long enough to allow this shaft to normalize, uh, normalize its speed. So again, it's a balance of speed to get smoothness. So then... Where does that exactly leave us? What do we do with this information? And to be honest, I don't really know. Part of me will say, I think the correct answer is, if you have your factory torque converter, leave those transition times alone, at least if you want a smooth shift, which I would suggest doing. If maybe you've swapped out the 6L80 converter and now you have a 6L90 converter, then look through some factory tunes from a 6L90 car and get a sense for what those transition times are doing. If you have an aftermarket converter, then, you know, all bets are off. I would imagine you could probably safely lower those turbine transition times to be more aggressive, simply because those converters, most likely you have a high stall converter, they're going to slip more. So there's less fluid coupling between the impeller, stator, and turbine. And it's going to be loose anyway, so even, you know, it should spin up and slow down a lot easier with less effect or disrupting the apple cart. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, I have a Circle D converter. It's a 3600 stall. Uh, I may reach out to Circle D and see what they say. And if I get any type of feedback or something, um, I'll be sure to report back. All right. Uh, that is everything. Oh, wait, no bonus material. So this is actually going to be a sneak peek for the next one uh, presentation I'm doing of torque management. So we have this 45 degree line. Um, this is going to represent maybe a perfect shift or if not a perfect shift, it's going to recognize or represent, I should say, what if we never shifted and we just kind of indefinitely kept accelerating. This thick black line down here is going to represent your seat of the pants feel when you're driving in the car. What does it feel like when you're sitting there? So the first part, um, optionally, you know, if it applies, we're going to unlock the converter. Torque management will be applied, which is the next video that we're going to talk about. Then we have the oncoming clutch fill, which is going to be controlled by the adaptives, both in, uh, well, just the volume, I should say. Um, then the off-going clutch is going to disengage. We have adaptives here controlling how much pressure. Then we have this turbine transition characterization. This off-going clutch is disengaged. And the next part is we're going to wait before we engage this clutch. So this is just dead time. Everything that we talked about today, this turbine characterization, is how much time do we wait with no clutches engaged just to allow that shaft to do whatever it wants to do to normalize its RPM. Sometimes we exit early, sometimes we wait the full time. It just sort of depends. Then, after that waiting time is done, we engage the clutch. Um, and this is all stuff internal to the transmission. And then, you know, the torque management, which we're about to talk about in the next video, this is external to the transmission. And then uh, we're going to unlock the clutch. And then away we go into amazing awesomeness of the 6L80E, propelling us onwards and upwards to the future and to victory. Well, thanks for your time and thanks for listening. Again, if you have any feedback or if you have any other thing that I've missed or corrections, please, I implore you, fellas, let me know. All right. Thanks. Bye.